Four Pillar Sports, a podcast for sports fans, made by sports fans. Join Chris and Randy every week as they dive deep into football, basketball, baseball, and professional wrestling. Catch for Pillar Sports on all major platforms. And remember, keep on talking sports. This is your girl, Yannick Taylor, a.k.a. Priestess, hostess of Conversations with the Priestess. Here's a preview of what you may hear on Conversations with the Priestess. We weren't meant for monogamy, let's be honest. Like, we have needs, let's be real. And communicating that, what you want, what you don't want, what sets up... Now, this drink is brown, because I learned something. Since I'm older, I can't do brown liquor anymore. Also, I noticed since I started on hormone replacement there at HRT in 2015, me and certain liquors don't match, don't match well. I don't know whether... And I recognize that a lot of men love to be dominated by women. And that's because men are seen as these leaders, as this big alpha male dominant thing, dominant being. And because they're put on this pedestal of being leaders, sometimes they want to be submissive. Back when I cosplayed a butch queen in South Carolina around 2011, I was on Craigslist. This is when Craigslist was bumping and before they had gotten rid of the personal section. I hope you enjoyed that preview. Join me on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. for Priestess After Dark. Full video versions of the podcast can be found on patreon.com forward slash CWT Priestess. And join me on Fridays at noon for our regular Friday post. Live, love, and be free. Smooches. Available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, anywhere you download and stream podcasts. This podcast contains adult content. Some of the themes or topics may include information on murder, kidnapping, torture, dismemberment, maybe some demonic content with information on positions and paranormal activity. This podcast will also include explicit, horrible and foul, socially unacceptable, totally uninhibited adult themes language. So if you're easily offended, if you're easily triggered, then I highly suggest you turn this off now. And if not, just keep in mind, parental discretion is advised. Welcome, welcome to another episode of Mysterious Circumstances. I am your host, Justin. Today we're going to be talking about the hauntings on Clinton Road. Not going to lie to you. After researching this, it's a little underwhelming. That's just my personal opinion. You guys might think it's pretty awesome. I don't know. But before we get started, I do have to thank some new Patreon subscribers. We got Andrew V and Robert. I appreciate you two a lot. I hope you're enjoying that backlog of episodes. For those of you on the $10 tier, please email me, reach out to me, justin.mcpodcast at gmail.com. You can also get a hold of me on whatever social media and uh, set up those video calls. For everybody else, if you want to check out Patreon, we have, I think, 125 episodes on there now. 99% of those are not on the regular feed. We have a 2 5 and $10 tier. Check out the website, scroll through, see if there's anything on there you like. You can go to patreon.com slash mysterious circumstances. Also, if you want to make a one-time donation, you can hit me at Venmo at MC Podcast, and I will send you some episodes, whatever kind you want, whether it's crime, paranormal, mysteries, anything, because it's it's a mixed bag on Patreon, just like it is on the regular feed. So, with that behind us, let me state some sources real quick. Weird New Jersey Magazine, SeattleTimes.com archive from 1998, and an Associated Press article from 1986. Now, if you notice, not that many sources. The main source is Weird New Jersey Magazine, which, of course, fed Wikipedia all its information. There is a little bit more info out there, but that's why it's kind of underwhelming, because all of these stories are coming from one source, and that is usually not a good thing, especially when it comes to the paranormal and hauntings. But, I don't know, you might like it, you might not. I guess you're going to find out. All 
Alright, so let's get a little info about this road. It is located in West Milford, Passaic County, New Jersey. It runs, for the most part, north and south. It is 9.3 miles long. The south end cuts off at Route 23 in West Milford. The north end cuts off at Warwick Turnpike in West Milford. The construction of this road was completed in the 1700s. And it has been known for the last 20 plus years for legends of paranormal activity. We have ghost sightings, strange creatures, gatherings of witches, Satanists, and one of the scariest things about this road is that it is rumored that professional killers used to dispose of bodies in the surrounding woods. And the kicker is, that actually did happen one time, and we'll get to that here in a second. Weird New Jersey Magazine uh, apparently in this magazine, this is a huge topic of discussion, or it used to be. They devoted an entire issue to it. And even the local police chief says it's a long, desolate stretch and makes the imagination go nuts. There are very few houses along the road. I think there were only four that I read about. And even the houses don't really have any properties attached to it. It's just really thick woods. The road is described as a narrow two-lane highway, and it gets very little maintenance. It's not part of New Jersey's county route system, and until about 1997 or 1998, it wasn't even a paved road. So even at the busiest times of day, there's very, very little traffic, so they really didn't see a reason to pave it. But it is notorious for having the country's longest traffic light, which honestly would probably piss me off more than any ghosts or weird creatures out there in the woods. And it happens at the double intersection where Route 23 crosses Clinton Road. Between these two lights, you can wait for about five minutes in total. And the wait is so long because traffic planners gave uh, the priority to Route 23 to reduce backups during rush hour. There is also a reservoir in the area, and the road and the reservoir get their name from the original settlement of Clinton. And that's about all the info we really got on the road itself. So, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the legends and folklore of this place. Along Clinton Road and areas along or near Clinton Road have had a lot of urban legends, all right? And this started happening after the publication of Weird New Jersey because they started devoting a bunch of articles and an entire issue to this topic, one of which being Ghost Boy Bridge. According to Weird New Jersey... There is a legend that if someone puts a quarter in the middle of the road where the yellow line is at one of the bridges over Clinton Brook, which is known as Dead Man's Curve near the reservoir, if you do this at midnight, it will supposedly be returned to you right away by the ghost of a boy who drowned while swimming below the bridge or had fallen off the bridge while sitting on the edge of it. Some stories say an apparition is seen. Other stories say the ghost pushes the person into the water if they look over the side of the bridge. And the ghost supposedly does this in order to save them from being run over as this boy was in real life. I'll be honest with you, if you Google Ghost Boy Bridge, I can probably guarantee, I didn't even do it, but I can guarantee there's probably more than one story around the U.S. about a Ghost Boy Bridge. And as you just heard according to Weird New Jersey. All right, I'm going to be the first one to tell you I'm not trying to be the party pooper here, but I can publish a haunted magazine and make all kinds of shit up if I want to. And I can guarantee there's going to be a bunch of people that buy into it. There's going to be a bunch of teenagers out there on that bridge, probably within two weeks. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it goes. Now, besides this ghost boy, there have been other paranormal activities described by Weird New Jersey readers. Now, the thing with Weird New Jersey is, supposedly, people write in their ghost stories. Okay, that's cool. I don't know. That just really, really bothers me right there. One story claims to have seen a ghost Camaro driven by a girl who supposedly died when she crashed it in 1988. 
And if you're driving down this road at night and you mention this particular story, it's going to trigger a manifestation and you're going to see this ghost Camaro. Here's the best part about this kind of stuff. <laughs> no matter what state you're in, you can look up fatal motor vehicle reports from any year. So I took the time out and I looked up the 1988 New Jersey State Police Fatal Motor Vehicle Accident Comparative Data Report. And I shit you not, it's done by the, uh, the state of New Jersey and the Department of Law and Public Safety Division of the State Police. So this is actually really cool because if you're ever curious in your state, if you hear a story or something shit like this, you can look these up. And what they do is they break down every single auto fatality in the state that year. And I mean, when they break it down, they break it down by weather conditions that night, whether the person was making a right turn, a left turn, whether they were the driver, passenger intoxicated, lost control, whether it was a person riding a bicycle, a pedestrian who got hit, all that shit, literally everything. So I looked up Clinton Road. And there is not one single fatality that happened on that road, pedestrian or driver or passenger, anything, in 1988. So, I don't know where this story comes from. Probably one of the readers who submitted a story. Or maybe they're just making shit up. I don't know. But there is not one single auto-related fatality on that road in 1988. So, there's that. Another story that was apparently submitted to uh, Weird New Jersey Magazine is that a couple people encountered two park rangers one night while camping with friends near Terrace Pond, which is around a ridge that is accessible from the road by hiking trails. And apparently in the morning, they found out that these two park rangers were ghosts <laughs> who had died on the job in 1939. And I'm so fucking curious as to how they found this out and when it happened. Were they out there Googling? Because if this is in the late 90s, we know that shit ain't happening. And they found it out the next morning. I don't understand that one, but we can break these down one by one, you know. We're going to have fun. Other weird New Jersey readers claim to have seen people dressed weirdly at odd hours who simply stare at them, who see them and do not speak, who either disappear or are not seen by others present. All right, I'm going to tell you, out here it's kind of desolate around these parks and shit. I'm not saying teenagers are going out there to smoke some weed. Not going out there to trip their balls off. Maybe they're eating some mushrooms, drinking some beers, you know, partying a little bit. Listen, never done it myself, but I read in a book one time that sometimes you see shit when you're tripping. So please take that with a grain of salt. This next one is really good, though. The Druidic Temple. And it is a conical stone structure just east of the road, south of the reservoir. And it is said by Weird New Jersey readers to be a site where local Druids practiced their rituals and horrible things might come to pass for any intruder who looked too closely or came at the wrong time. And the funniest part about this one is... The building is actually an iron smelter that was built in 1826. It was officially listed on the National Register of Historic Places as Clinton Furnace in 1976. It is currently fenced off by the Newark Water Department so that people don't get fucking hurt out there and then they don't get sued. I'm not 100% sure on how much... Druid activity happened in New Jersey in the past, but I'm going to go ahead and assume probably not fucking much. As a person who is, uh, my spirituality is technically considered under the pagan umbrella, Druids are a very small percentage, especially in America. So we can take that as a factor as well if you want to, but yeah, nothing too crazy going on here. To be honest with you, it was probably some old dude out there. He was tired of people fucking around on his property. You know, rattles off a couple shells out of the shotgun to scare some kids off. And then it's like, no, it's a druid temple. I saw somebody out there with a with a hood up. It's like, dude, you know, really? I don't know. I just find that really hard to believe. 
I really do. And like, don't get me wrong, I'd love to go out there. Obviously, it's fenced off. I can't now, but it is what it is. Now, before we get to the last few uh, stories and then the actual real one, the very, very real story, let's go ahead and take a quick break. I'm going to play some ads. I'll meet you back here in a few minutes. Four Pillar Sports, a podcast for sports fans, made by sports fans. Join Chris and Randy every week as they dive deep into football, basketball, baseball, and professional wrestling. Catch for Pillar Sports on all major platforms. And remember, keep on talking sports. The great visionary leader of India, Mahatma Gandhi, said, It is health that is real wealth and not pieces of gold and silver. Listen to the Healthy Grocer radio show on your favorite podcast platform. We know that health is our greatest wealth, and we will be discussing all aspects of natural healing. Explore everything from supplements, superfoods, and healthy lifestyle choices to help conquer stress and boost productivity. Top industry experts and natural health professionals join us for a deep dive into our healing journey. You can find the Healthy Grocer radio show on demand every day, wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And remember, health is your greatest wealth. All righty. (laughs) Next story we got up is the ghost truck. And according to the Travel Channel show, Most Terrifying Places in America Part 2, phantom vehicles such as pickup trucks or even floating headlights not attached to any vehicle supposedly appear from nowhere in the middle of the night and chase drivers to the end of the road. Then they disappear. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about that considering we just found out that there is even in the busiest of hours barely any traffic so it you know it's probably teenagers out there driving around trying to see some scary shit i don't know probably one of the locals on that road just being like get off my damn road some shit like that i don't know man i'm not saying i don't believe some of this shit but the fact that 99 percent of these stories are coming from one fucking source that just really bothers me and i know i said that earlier but it is a fact you can watch that um, that show, that Travel Channel show. It's on Amazon or Hulu with the premium subscription. I think it's on Hulu with the premium subscription. So go check it out. Tell me what you think. I didn't even bother watching it. It's whatever. This is probably one of my favorite stories. And it is the story of strange creatures. We have one that is a hellhound that they have named Wolfie, which is... Apparently an experimental albino wolf dog. Then we have monkeys and unidentifiable hybrids. These animals are alleged by Weird New Jersey magazine to have been seen at night. (laughs) And uh, there might be some weird animals out there just because of the fact that there used to be a jungle habitat in this area and it was a nearby attraction and they closed it in 1976 and some of these animals might have been survivors of that and cross bred with each other so that could possibly be a thing and it's so funny because uh one of my sources the seattle times archive article from 98 they were talking about when they were kids and these people were like Yeah, we used to hear stories all the time about yetis being out here. Literally the abominable snowman out here in fucking New Jersey. So, I don't know what they got going on out there. But, we also have the story of Cross Castle. And this goes, In 1905, a man named Richard Cross built a castle on Highland near the reservoir for his wife and three children. Later on in the 20th century... It was pretty much destroyed by a fire, not all of it, but most of it. So it became a really popular place for hikers and local teenagers to go because it was secluded and they could go there and have parties and camp out. Now, according to Weird New Jersey magazine, visitors have written telling of strange occurrences in or near the castle site. 
such as people going into seizures and having bruises appearing on their bodies afterwards, or having strange, disturbing visions. Also, writings that suggest satanic symbols have been reported as appearing on the castle's interior walls, particularly in areas that were supposedly inaccessible. Apparently, Newark's water department kind of destroyed the place. It was a nuisance. They destroyed it in 1988, but there's still the foundation there, and several hiking trails still lead you to it, so you can still go to it, but there's only the foundation left. So, I don't know. I, I just find a lot of this shit hard to believe. The one thing that is real that is pretty fucking wild, on May 14th, 1983... The body of Daniel Deppner was found when a bicyclist riding down Clinton Road in a small wooded area spotted this guy's corpse being eaten by a turkey vulture. The thing about this body is that it was wrapped inside a green garbage bag before being dumped. Richard Kuklinski, the fucking Iceman, was charged and convicted of this murder and he is the one who dumped the body out there. That is the most terrifying of all the stories, knowing that the Iceman himself was probably out there dumping bodies, and if you came across that shit, you were probably going to get murdered too. <laughs> so there's that. Now, if there is one thing that I have to give the magazine Weird New Jersey credit for, that is creating problems for a family that live on that road. They own a house, it's like, like I said, I think it was like one of four houses back in 1998. And this is from uh, an article written called Haunted House Nightmare Rumors Bring Visitors Who Make New Jersey Families Life Miserable. I don't know how the hell this ended up in Seattle Times, but whatever. And at the time, it was the McKinnon family. So once Weird New Jersey started printing all these stories, and then Clinton Road got paved... Teenagers started going up and down the road, and the house that they lived in looked somewhat abandoned. So there would be teenagers out there all the time, fucking throwing bottles, trying to throw them through the windows and shit. There's literally a family living in this house, and basically making their lives a living hell. And it's funny because in this article, they actually interviewed an old guy who had lived on the road since the 1930s. And he straight up says, there was never any story about it being haunted. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> you know, he's like, I don't know, man. All of a sudden, all these uh, fucking kids started showing up thinking everything's haunted. And it's, that's what happens, dude. And I mean, this poor family, dude, they put floodlights out in their property trying to deter these fucking kids. You know, in 15 years, they had never heard of any of these stories with the exception of the fucking Yeti one which blows my mind, and then there was another one about the whole, you know, two teenagers making out, and then she leaves the vehicle and comes back, and he's, he's dead, you know, like, hanging from one of the trees, which is, like, one of the oldest urban legends fucking ever, but yeah, there's nothing really going on out here on Clinton Road, I'm pretty sure, if I'm ever in the area, I'll probably drive up and down it just to say that I did, but not very optimistic on anything actually happening. So yeah, if any of you have personal stories from Clinton Road, I did talk to, somebody did comment on one of my Instagram posts about when I was going to do these episodes, and she said, she's like, yeah, it's pretty creepy out there. I'm not going to lie, but she really didn't specify any any stories or anything like that. She just said it was creepy out there. So there is that. I don't know. But anyway... Ways that you can get a hold of me, justin.mcpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow my Instagram, mysterious underscore podcast. You can follow me on Twitter at podcastmc. You can also follow me on TikTok, which is the same as my personal Instagram, burnitall13. I really don't post too many videos on TikTok anymore. I don't know. Just kind of not really in the mood for that shit for the last year or something. Uh, other than that, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this very anticlimactic ghost story. Sorry I'm the Debbie Downer here. Sorry I don't believe some of these stories coming from one source. That just randomly started in the 90s. 
I hope you guys have a great one. Till next time, see you on the flip side.